How far will you fight for a cause you believe in? Would you dedicate your life to and for it? Well, join us in our latest Cinephile episode to find out, and be sure to visit our Funday website for more. Hello everyone, I'm Wade, your cinephile host. The Devil's Own is a 1997 American action thriller film starring Harrison Ford and Brad Pitt. The plot revolves around Frankie, a member of the provincial Irish Republican Army who comes to the United States to obtain black market anti-aircraft missiles to shoot down British helicopters in Northern Ireland. The plan is complicated by an Irish American policeman, Tom, who eventually regards Frankie as family. In 1972, 8-year-old Frankie McGuire witnesses his father killed as an Irish Republican sympathizer. 20 years later, in Belfast, adult Frankie and three other IRA members engage in a gun battle with the British Army and Special Reconnaissance Unit. One gunman is killed. Another, Desmond, is wounded as Frankie and Sean flee. Frankie and a friend Martin, seeing a British Army helicopter circling above, decided that they needed Stinger missiles. Frankie travels to New York City as Rory Devani to purchase missiles. IRA sympathizer Judge Peter Fitzsimmons has procured Frankie a construction job as a cover and arranged for him to stay with NYPD Sergeant Tom O'Mara, his wife Sheila, and their three daughters on Staten Island. The O'Mara family warmly welcomed Frankie into their household, unaware of his true identity. What are you doing? A building site. Construction. Good, good. Well, if there's anything you need, just... Oh, no, it's okay. It's very decent of you to put me up like this. I don't think us think fits. Guys, dinner! We'll be right there, honey. Besides, it's good to have somebody around here that pee standing up. The next day, Frankie takes a ferry into the city where he meets his old pal Sean, who acquires an old fishing boat for them to transport the missiles to Ireland. Frankie meets with black market arms dealer and Irish mobster, Billy Burke. <laughs> Billy Burke. Rory Devani. Martin sent me. He's a good man, Martin. Aye. So how do you like America, Rory Devani? Fine. Land of the opportunist, if you ask me. That it is. Fourteen years old, I was sweeping the back of a saloon. Today I got three of my own, among other things. Done well for yourself. Done well with you lads too. Drink. Sit down. Frankie agrees to pay Burke upon delivery of the missiles in six to eight weeks. Later that evening, Tom invites Frank to join him for a walk. They end up at a bar and team up to beat their opponents at a game of pool. Judge Fitzsimmons raises the money and sends it with his family nanny, Megan, to deliver it to Frankie. They meet at Central Park, and Frankie learns that she's actually a childhood friend. During a party, Frankie receives a call from Megan, saying that Martin was killed and that he could be next, postponing the deal with Burke. I'll tell you, Rory, I'm sorry about Martin, but uh, these are not soda cans you asked me to get for you. These are no deposit, no return items, and I am out of pocket for some very serious dollars. You are putting me in a very awkward position here. I'm sorry, Mr. Burke. That's the way it has to be for now. One day, while on patrol, Tom and his partner, Eddie Diaz, witness a thief breaking into a car. Eddie pursues him on foot and fatally shoots him in the back while he was unarmed. Following an intense investigation, Tom had to lie to cover up for Eddie, so he decides to retire from the force and tells his wife over lunch. 
23 years and you never took a bribe. You never abused your power. You never treated anyone unfairly. I treated the dead guy unfair. He shot at you. He was stealing radios. He got shot in the back. You don't deserve to get killed for stealing a radio. Tom, it's terrible that he died. But you're not the only cop on the force who's made a mistake. Besides, you didn't make the mistake. Eddie did. I lied. Don't you understand? When Tom and Sheila arrives home, masked intruders were waiting. Sheila calls 911 as Tom fights them off. Frankie arrives just in time and aids Tom, but they are subdued when one of the intruders held a gun over Sheila. As police sirens approach, Tom persuades the men to escape while they still can. Begrudgingly, they make their escape. Frankie, realizing what they were there for, confronts Burke, knowing he ordered the attack. You're a stupid man, Mr. Burke. You're only seeing me standing between you and the money. But you're forgetting about the thousand other men standing behind me. That's a mistake. Are you with me there, love? Burke then reveals that he has Sean captive and demands Frankie to pay him or he will kill Sean. Frankie rushes home to collect the money he hid at O'Mara's house. But Tom has found it and forced Frankie to reveal his true identity. Where'd you go when you left here? Got to make sure it wouldn't happen again. It was all lies, wasn't it? Everything you told us. Except for how I feel about you and your family, though. It wasn't a lie. I'm sorry. Never meant for this to happen. Just... Frankie insists he needs to take the money, but Tom wouldn't allow it. Eddie arrives, and they arrest Frankie together. En route to the police station, Frankie escapes and is forced to kill Eddie. Later, the FBI and British authorities interrogate Tom about Frankie. He realized their mission is to execute Frankie. Meeting Burke in a warehouse, Burke's thugs toss Sean's severed head at Frankie's feet. Rather than handing over the money, Frankie gives them a bomb-laden bag that explodes when opened. Frankie then grabs a gun, killing Burke and his men, then drives off with the missiles. At the Fitzsimmons residence, Frankie tells Megan to alert his comrades that he is leaving that night to return to Ireland with the missiles. I need you to tell him I'm coming. Look, I'm not saying you have to give it up. All I'm saying is to lay low for a while. Until the whole thing quietens down. Frankie, if you want to fight, you have to stay alive. You're no use to anyone if you're dead. Tom crashes the Fitzsimmons cocktail party and confronts the judge. Tom recognizes Megan from a photo in Frankie's bag. Frankie, who's hiding upstairs, escapes. Tom persuades Megan to reveal where Frankie is going by promising to protect him from being assassinated. Jumping aboard the boat as it's leaving the dock, Tom and Frankie shoot at each other, wounding both. Frankie, seemingly having the upper hand, hesitates to shoot Tom, then collapses. They had embraced each other, realizing that both were fighting for a cause they believed in. Frankie dies and Tom, though badly wounded, steers the boat back to shore. A touching but tragic ending that teaches us life isn't always as black and white as we make it out to be. 致命突击队, the Devil's Own, So Ruby, what did you think about the ending of this movie? Tragic, but it's also touching to see how much they're willing to sacrifice for what they believe in, each with a worthy cause. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the difference between a good cause and a worthy cause? A good cause is 充分或是正当理由的意思. As for a worthy cause, worthy stands for 有价值的. 
Oh, so it's more like a cause that leaves you better than you were before. Exactly. Hey, what are some other ways to use the word worthy? Hmm. 一个常见的用法是在 worthy of 后接事物，如 worthy of notice 值得注意的。Oh yeah, we also say worthy of one's respect 值得尊敬的。Hmm. And have you heard of worthy of the name? Yes, 是指对得起自己 title. 对。或是名副其实的。Mm-hmm. Well, I'm Wade. I'm Ruby. I hope you have learned something useful in this episode of Cinephile, as I did. You can find more on the Fun Day website. Let's, Let's make, make every day, day a fun day. day. There are some things I said I would never do. Once, Tom, you did it once. What about next time? I can't do the job this way. I'm done being a cop. But you love being a cop. I love you. I love the kids. I love what we got.